What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another Magic the Gathering video and today we are looking at the May 13th, 2024 ban and restricted announcement. This is around the window that we would get a ban and restricted announcement, uh, kind of similar to what happened with the Mergers of Karlov Manor set and I believe the set before it. If I could actually remember what was the set before Mergers of Karlov Manor, it all starts to kind of run together when we have you know a seemingly infinite amount of product that just gets released and spoilers and everything like that so uh but anyway you know we have the banner restricted announcement here it goes over every single format that is available to us on you know in paper and on magic the gathering arena so before we get too deep into that we look at the cards that are banned unbanned you can see kind of uh, some of the cards here already uh if you are new to the channel and you want to consider supporting me and my content it's a free easy way to do is to subscribe to the channel and ring notification bell so you you know when future videos get posted i post a lot of content geared towards the modern and pioneer format even some of the longer form videos as well kind of geared to those formats so if any of that interests you again consider subscribing ring notification bell so you know when those videos get posted so may 13th 2024 we have our banned restricted announcement and uh it seems like a pretty easy one the first one, Legacy Vintage Popper. All cards that bring a sticker or an attraction into the game are banned. The full list of cards are down below. So I think technically this makes one of the largest banned and restricted announcements of all time. Just from this initial, you know, wave of cards. You know, it instead of naming every single individual card, there are two lists of cards. So basically, I believe it was from like the Unfinity set. There was some black border cards that were technically tournament legal, and we'll get into the, the part that kind of explains it, because there was, like, one card in particular that was, like, very legacy playable uh, in that set, so... Uh, and I probably vintage as well, but, you know, specifically, like, legacy and pauper, you know, there was... Uh, like blank goblin you could stick a sticker on it and it ends up becoming a different creature and then like you end up rolling a dice and it generates an amount of mana and normally you end up getting your mana back plus more and then end up getting to cast some big ridiculous things like in legacy you could cast it on like turn two or something like that probably like turn one or turn two and then you could immediately just go into like a muxus and just like completely wreck face like on that turn you know barring any force of wills of course so uh all cards that uh bring a sticker and attraction into the game are banned and that's probably just for a, a good thing in general you know based on just uh, a plethora of the things that you need to actually make those cards work and pauper being the last format it looks like that is uh, affected with all that glitters being banned uh, it's a uh, two mana for an enchant creature. When an uh, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control, you would see this kind of like in the affinity decks in the format where, you know, you just slap this on a creature like an ornithopter or whatever, you know, and you have all these artifacts, you have a few of these enchantments and everything like that, you're just going to end up smacking your opponent for a bunch. Of course, like auras and things like that as well, uh, being a deck that wanted this. But it's gone, uh, just a way to deal like a ton of damage. So the next banned and restricted announcement will be June 24th, 2024. The list of all banned and restricted cards by format are here. So we can go to the banned and restricted list and, you know, check out all the formats banned list. So Legacy and Vintage, all cards that bring a sticker or attraction to the game are banned. And this is the card I was talking about, Blink Goblin, which is a 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. So this, actually, you can play this on like turn 1. I thought it was like 4 mana. So uh, this creature enters the battlefield. You may put a name sticker on it, and then you add a red for each unique vowel, stick, uh, vowel on that sticker. So you're able to generate like uh, quite a few mana. There's like another card, I believe, that is like insane that does like that adds mana and things like that. So um, has become a reasonable card to play in Legacy, and that leading to some awkwardness in tournaments. Not only do goblins players need to create and brings a sticker deck. Uh, many decks that feature clones, such as Phyrexian Manowar, feel obligated to bring sticker decks on the off chance they're able to copy a Blank Goblin. Players must present these decks at the start of every match, regardless of whether or not they have any cards in their deck that interact with them. The primary goal behind making some cards in Unfinity legal was that sticker cards and attractions could be played in Commander, but there's no existing way to put to make a bunch of cards legal in Commander and not legal in Legacy. We had thought the power level of those cards were, was low enough that people tried them in Legacy every now and then. It would be a fun surprise. We missed on Goblin, though, uh, and tournament players feel obligated to interact with the sticker mechanic. We think that it is not a healthy and fun dynamic to happen in paper or digital play, so we decided to ban every card that creates a sticker or attraction card. We consider banning all side decks, but that is more difficult to align with how it functions between gatherer, digital, and uh, tabletop. 
We released Unfinity. We knew it was a partially legality in Magic's broader formats. It was an experiment with risks. The concept of widening a set's appeal to more players is at its core a good one. Moving forward, we won't be revisiting this kind of experiment anytime soon. So it sounds like not only with the banning of stickers and attractions and things like that, I also believe that there, uh, there isn't any plans for another unset either. So definitely uh, anything in like a main set or like a joke set, anything like that, does not look like it's going to be revisited anytime soon in Magic. And maybe that's probably for the best, honestly. Um, even though, you know, modern Pioneer, we didn't get anything like this, this is still probably something overall that is just good for Magic in general. So standard, uh, we partially care about standard for like a third of the year. So uh, standard has been a large focus of ours in the past year. We are happy where... Uh, with where the format is after the conclusion of Pro Tour Thunder Junction, we were not surprised to see as per mid-range deck full of independently powerful cards command the highest play rate at the Pro Tour, because usually mid-range decks in a big standard format are end up being uh, probably some of the best decks to play in the format. But the results of the tournament proved that it can be uh, it can be attacked and is a healthy part of the metagame. The top eight proved to be diverse with six different decks, including creative decks such as White Black Bronco, Four Color Legends, commanding strong win rates in the tournament, which I believe we saw a White Black Bronco deck like somewhere in like the double digit rounds too. And like that deck actually looked pretty sweet too. Uh, we are happy so far with the impact of Outlaws of Thunder Junction and Standard. As the 12th set in the environment, faced a big uphill battle to get cards into decks, finishing the cycle of fast lands with many individual cards making their way into sideboards and main decks. We hope to get more balanced mana bases and can provide more of a baseline to breed more creativity into the format. Our next ban and restricted announcement following the release of Modern Horizons 3 will be the window in which we will consider banning cards in standard. To reiterate some of our philosophy, we intend to only make changes to standard once a year during the summer, unless they're an extremely warping outlier. We will be closely watching the metagame and leading to the next ban and restricted announcement. So if you play standard, you know, we're looking at the uh, June, the I think it was like June 14th or something like that, June 24th uh, date to, you know, look for standard bannings and things like that. So now the things that at least most of us on the channel care about, Pioneer. Pioneer remains in a healthy state after the Pro Tour merged at Karlov Manor. And if you ask a lot of people, you know, like Amalia probably could have been here. Something from, you know, Rakdos Vampires could have been here. Maybe even like Treasure Cruise, things like that. But, you know, uh, so the breakout Rakdos, deck, uh, Rakdos Vampires deck from the Pro Tour utilizing Vein Ripper has proven that it is not a fluke and continues to be an important part of the Pioneer metagame. Its prevalence has contributed to a decline in Is It Phoenix win rate, a deck that we've been monitoring coming out of the Pro Tour given its large degree of success there. The biggest shakeup coming out of Outlaws of Thunder Junction was a large metagame increase in mono black waste knot decks utilizing the brand new Caravec the Punisher, which is absolutely nuts in those black decks, by the way. Uh, Caravec is a massive card advantage engine alongside with all your interaction that commits crimes, and another strategy that is a meaningful play four copies of Go Blank as powerful options against the Front Running Phoenix. For now, Pioneer is in a great place where playing any macro archetype is viable, aggro, control, mid range, or combo, with tools in each strategy to address one another. And I'm actually kind of surprised because, like, really, the only deck I see that are like viable as like an aggro deck is like kind of like the Slick Shot deck. I think Boros against anything that is not Amalia has a chance of actually, you know, having some success. But I think Amalia has like a high enough like win rate or, you know, a play rate anyway that, you know, playing Boros Convoke is kind of a, I think kind of a bold choice, you know, against a deck that is basically now focused on like turboing in on the combo, blowing up the board, getting to find an Aetherflux Reservoir or a, uh, a return to the ranks and just being able to kind of either set up to go off again or whatnot. So, uh, well, I think aggro is a, like loosely aggro is viable. And I think loosely control in a way is viable, you know, definitely the mid range and combo decks are, you know, pretty good in the format, but, um, so it looks like we may or may not see any bannings in pioneer anytime soon. Uh, even with kind of like, I would say the polarizing, uh, play rates of, you know, Rakdos vampires and the, is it Phoenix decks? Moving on to Modern, uh, this probably comes as no surprise with Modern Horizons 3 around the corner releasing June 14th of 2024. Naturally, we expect Modern Horizons 3 to make an impact on the format, and I'm personally very excited to see the brewing and experimentation that comes out of the set. The last week, the last action we took was the ban of Violent Outburst, which has left the Modern metagame in a healthy state to absorb Modern Horizons 3. The play and win rate of various Cascade strategies has come back in line to a place we're happy with. There are murmurings and concerns of Leyline of the Guild Pack, 
enabling the uh, variety of Sion and Draco strategies, and even around the time we last discussed the format. The community has experimented with many of them, but what emerges the most popular and strongest strategy is a five-color take on the traditionally two-color Is It Murktide deck has settled into the appropriate win and play rate. Enjoy your Modern Horizons 3 pre-release. So that was kind of like a big thing in the format, you know, for maybe some of you that this is your first video watching. Hi, hello. Uh, Modern had like kind of this weird time where we saw everybody playing Leyline of the Guild Pact and Cyan Draco in their deck and by extension, you know, like Leyline Binding. And those were just kind of like 12 cards that you wanted to start with in any deck and really there was a lot of strategy i mean there's definitely strategies that utilized it a lot better i mean like rhinos was pretty sick even like when they had violent outbursts as well just being able to give all your rhinos basically unkillable and then getting to attack with them play defense gain a bunch of life and a bunch of racing situations even when your opponent was also playing like scion there were some ways that you could like get the upper hand on them you know like again with just the fact of having violent outbursts where like that one point of power actually would matter you know, a little bit more just because you'd actually be able to trample over some damage and, like, crash your rhinos and things like that. But, um, yeah, so Modern Horizons 3, we expect to have a pretty big impact on the format. It does look pretty powerful. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the leaks are kind of ruining my hype for this set and just the fact that, like, unofficial, like, releases of cards and stuff like that. But, you know, Modern currently is, I would say, like, in a pretty okay place. I think modern uh, the Modern format's a fine place to, you know, kind of play right now as we kind of wait for it to become the RCQ uh, format, you know, or, yeah, the format of the RCQ season. So, you know, Modern's okay right now. Definitely, uh, definitely fine with, like, waiting until Modern Horizons 3 for any sort of significant changes to be made before we actually, you know, get the format and everything. Uh, Legacy, you know, all the banned sticker cards. Uh, we expect a small shakeup in the Legacy metagame. When we last discussed the format, we mentioned that we're keeping an eye on Orcish Bowmaster. How much influence it had on Legacy core blue-centric gameplay? Clearly, Bowmasters and Grief as well is a big player in the Legacy metagame, and there are cards that will continue to monitor for their long-term net fun as inclusions in the format. Grief has popped up recently as a power alternative form of attack and reanimate decks giving those strategies a lean tempo game uh, as the ability to go way over the top with reanimating more traditional targets like attracts a grand unifier i like how it says traditional targets like attracts a grand unifier like this card's i'm pretty sure this card's not even like a year old you know it's probably somewhere around like one year old and you know we're you know legacy anyways used to getting back like gristle brands and things like that and you know it's funny that Atraxa is considered now a traditional target of uh, legacy reanimator even though it's probably like one of the best targets you can hit honestly uh historically modern horizon sets have have the ability to influence legacy so we see how the format evolves as it absorbs a modern horizon 3 uh going to vintage uh vintage is like a pretty crazy place to play magic uh with vintage we continue to have a philosophy similar to legacy where the community sentiment can be just as powerful as data and tournament results we're keeping our eyes on loris and Urza Saga, also like Legacy, where you can see how Vintage incorporates cards from Modern Horizons 3, and we'll watch the format after this release. Popper All Glitters bans, uh, there's a Gavin uh, Verhey's article on uh, the full Popper explanation. Uh, Alchemy Explorer, whatever, Historic, Timeless, Brawl, you know, just Explorer is basically like Arena's version of Pioneer. All the cards banned in Pioneer that are on Arena are banned in Explorer. Alchemy is in a healthy state with a uh, heist keyword alchemy is arena's fast changing format and an upcoming set rotation which a lot of these cards like alchemy historic and stuff you'll see cards kind of get like you know debuffed or buffed or whatever in these than anything else uh, with additions and new powerful new match cards and allows another junction we see a rich and diverse set of decks being played in historic just a stormforge missing an example which gives support to equipment focused decks an archetype that is mostly missing from the format before modern horizon 3 brings a huge infusion of new tools to historic which modern horizon 3 is going to be released onto magic arena uh, timeless since the last release several decks have emerged in the format reanimate supports multiple new black deck archetypes uh all getting back cards often like troll of kazad doom i'm pretty sure that's like not the way you say that you storm blood lord and vein ripper for powerful threats archive traps seemingly uh significant place players mill explore mill based strategies and timeless mana drain also being a very powerful card and like historic modern horizon 3 is certainly going to change the format considerably and we will not be banning and restricting any cards and timeless before modern horizon 3 release but we will make the appropriate changes once the dust settles and then brawl like does anyone really play brawl like I'm sure, like, all the powerful things that, like, people are doing in Timeless, like, people are doing in Brawl as well. So, that is the full May 20, May 13th, 2024 Banner Restricted Announcement. 
And it looks like in just over a month, uh, we are going to be getting another banner restricted announcement. Crazy enough, they're going to go 10 days after the release of Modern Horizons 3 to kind of decide whether something should be banned or not. I believe like this philosophy, I'm like waiting after uh, a month after a set is released is like it has been pretty good i think it gives time for like after the pro tour like i'm like post pro tour enough time to kind of you know get enough data and see what that you know if decks that are doing well uh end up staying doing well or if it was just a product of like a a more limited meta game when you get to like the pro tour level and things like that and you know the choice of like pilots and things like that so definitely interesting to see how modern horizon 3 impacts the format as we kind of keep an eye on cards that are spoiled and or leaked from modern horizon 3 just because it is kind of fun to speculate and see what those cards are doing there's are some really cool callbacks to some other cards even with the uh other round of leaks that kind of come out there are some pretty cool callbacks to some other cards that of course we're going to cover on the channel as well on the podcast so you know if any of that is of interest to you if you want to kind of learn more about the modern and pioneer format we usually post different decks like every week we kind of talk about the you know the meta game and stuff like that on like the casual spikes podcast it goes up on most saturdays and things like that although here lately because work has been you know work getting a little bit busier in the summertime so uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for me in this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, again, please leave a like on the video. Comment down below what you think should have been banned in the uh, banned and restricted announcement. If you think they got it right, you know, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell because it is a free, easy way to support me and my content. I'm trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and we are on the fast track to do so. So if you want to be a part of that first 1,000 people, you know, please consider, again, subscribing and supporting me and my content. But that's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.